we're going to take a look at subtractive synthesis. I have the Pro 53 up. This is an instrument from Native Instruments. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see what's going on here. So just like all subtractive synthesizers, we have an oscillator section, a VCO as it were, which generates your sound. We have a filter section, which removes harmonic content. And we have an amplifier section, which is in charge of volume. We also have two modifiers, and those modifiers are the LFO section. So these are the modifier sections. And then we also have an envelope, attack, decay, sustain, release as well. So this synthesizer is set up a little bit differently than what you might see, um, but the principles are the same. I'm going to take a look at another synth here for a second in Logic. This is all the same in Pro Tools the, if you bring up the Pro 53 or in Cubase. But here is an example of another synthesizer, and this is the ES1 in Logic. And it's very similar where we have an oscillator section over here. In this case, two oscillators and a mix between them. A filter section and an amplifier. So the sound is essentially going from left to right. So it goes from the oscillator into the filter into the amplifier. And this ES1 is a rather simple synthesizer when we see that there is an envelope generator down here that can be assigned to different sources. And there's also a low frequency oscillator. So we're going to take a look at some of these and how they can be used to create sound. So here's what I've got. As I've got my Pro 53, I'm going to start by choosing File and I'm going to load an empty file, an empty preset, and that is under Applications Pro 53, Presets, Sounds, and Empty. And I can choose the empty one, and then we'll get this sound right here. Let's hope that it works. And I have to just change my playback so that it's playing the Pro 53. So here's what we've got. Yeah, very simple sound, not much to it, right? Very, very simple. So in the oscillator here, we can change the different waveforms. So then that's a saw wave. I'm going to turn it off, and then I'm going to press the square wave. And then I can also change the pulse width. So let's try that. So you can hear the different sounds that are made here. Down below, the oscillator B is turned off. So here's the mix. So we have the sound coming from oscillator A, sound coming from oscillator B, and then the mixer. The mixer also includes three things, oscillator A, B, and noise. And noise is great for creating helicopter sounds, percussion, any kind of sound effects that we have. So I'm going to turn off or down the volume of oscillator A. Turn on oscillator B by turning on keyboard tracking. That means that this oscillator will now respond to the keyboard. And let's hear the triangle wave by comparison. So it's very simple waveform. And then I can adjust the frequency. There you go, and stepping through. There we go, back to the original. Now I'm going to uh, add a square wave, why not? And then a saw wave from oscillator A back into one another. So here's what we've got. Ooh, that's cool. And then let's try our filter. This is a low pass filter. So the sound is coming out of these two oscillators, mixing together here, and going into the filter. And here's my cutoff frequency, which I'm going to bring down. And then it's coming back up. Let's add some resonance to that. So that is giving some emphasis to the end of the cutoff filter. We had a little um, harmony going there with the resonance. So that's what we got. Now, over in this section of the synthesizer, we have a number of voices analog, unison, and glide. Let's take a look at what each of them does. So, analog allows the synthesizer, which is emulating an um, analog synthesizer, to create some drift so that the oscillators change pitch a little bit. See how they go out of tune? So you can choose how out of tune they are. And we can also change the number of voices. I'm going to profit five, which this model is emulated after. You still only have five voices, but I'm going to crank it up. I'm going to make it 24, something insane, right? Something that software can do that the original can't. So there's 24 voices. So then I can play a chord. But if I press unison, it makes this 
mono it stacks all 24 voices or how many voices you have all on top of one another. So here, and then let's give some without and with. There you go. And here's glide. Glide is like portamento and some synthesizers where it glides between two pitches. the speed at which is determined by here. I'm going to turn all this off just so that we get back to the original kind of thing that we've got. I'm just going to choose a simple sound. I'm going to get rid of this oscillator B and now we're only going to hear saw wave. There you go. Simple. I turn down the resonance. There you go. Now we got a saw wave. And let's try and make a telephone sound. So the telephone uses uh, two pitches it goes back and forth between two sounds so I'm going to go to the LFO which produces a low frequency oscillator a low sound it's going to modulate pitch so I need a square wave so that it alternates between one pitch and another so it'll go up down up down and the frequency is how often it will alternate between the two pitches that I've assigned down here under the wheel mod I'm going to choose frequency A it means that it's going to change the frequency of oscillator A over time and then the mod wheel determines what the frequency is, whether it's going to be an octave or a semitone or anything in between. So here's what we've got. So then I'm choosing the mod wheel and pressing a key. Now I can increase the frequency, and I'm going to play the note and increase the frequency, but I'm going to go up maybe a fifth. And as you increase the frequency, you get more of a telephone sound, right? Hello? Hello? Uh, there you go. And let's try a different LFO. So if I change this saw, or excuse me, square wave to be a triangle wave, which is close to a sine wave, this is what we get. It's kind of what I call the death ray. And if you pull down the frequency, You get a little bit of a different sound for the pitch that's being applied. And let's try when we take off the triangle wave and try the saw wave, or otherwise known as a ramp wave. Intruder! That's what we get. Let's see what happens when we speed it up. And when you slow it down, you get the sense that it's almost the pole position game, as it were. So I'm going to turn off the oscillator, the low frequency oscillator, and it gives me back this sound. It's just a simple, simple sound. And let's try and create a helicopter sound. So a helicopter sound, I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to choose File Load, Empty, open it up. So there's my empty sound. It's just a saw wave being played. I'm going to turn off oscillator A and B increase the noise. So here's the noise. Sounds like a beautiful waterfall. Kinda, not quite. So now I'm going to apply, uh, for a helicopter I need to go ch, 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 ch. So to do that I have to turn on and off the sound of some sort. So in that case I'm going to use a square wave, LFO, frequency, and let's bring her up a little bit. Modifiers, the mod wheel is going to determine how much of this mod is being applied, and in this case, I'm going to apply it to the filter. So then this is going to be the filter opening and closing. You will not hear anything yet. So if I press a key, it won't work until you bring the cutoff frequency down. So I'm going to press and hold a key and then bring down the cutoff frequency. And then the frequency will determine how quickly those helicopter blades are spinning. And I can also change the cutoff frequency to be a little bit lower if I want. And I can also change the mod by how far open and how far closed that filter is. Okay, now there's an interesting part that we can add is not only do we have the blades that are shifting back and forth with the helicopter, but we also need the sound of the engine kind of humming in the background. So I'm going to turn on oscillator B, and it doesn't matter what sound, it could be any sound. I'm going to turn on all of these just to make a little bit of noise. Watch what happens when I take the mixer and increase oscillator B. Start to get 
to get a sound, but it's too high in frequency, it's too high in pitch. So I can pull that down with the frequency over here. And before you know it, I get a pretty convincing 1980s video game type helicopter sound. So it's not bad, and then you can see on the screen what I've done for these effects. I'm going to choose File Load, I'm going to choose an empty, uh, there we go, back to the original. And let's try and create a snare drum type effect, such as a vintage drum machine that would use an analog sound, such as a TR-808 or so. So here's what I'm going to do is remove oscillator A and B, and a snare sound is like ksh, but more attack. So then that is going to be mainly noise. So I'm going to crank up the noise. And here's what we've got. And here I just have to adjust the am excuse me, the envelope for the amplifier. So let's bring that down. I'm going to bring down the sustain. So now only here's a little snap, but I have to bring up the decay. And then it's almost a perfect snare sound. And I can do a couple other things. I can increase the resonance, I can pull down the filter. And then as soon as I do that, I almost get the kick drum sound. Mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah. Right? So you can and you can adjust how much sustain it has by adding some more sustain. I'm gonna open the release just a little bit. Again, pull the resonance off, open up the filter. And then, of course, you have to adjust your sustain. And you get a little more of a snare sound. So then that's how most snares. And the hi-hat would be maybe a little bit of resonance and the filter pulled off a little bit. Let's see if we can get a hi-hat sound. Yeah. So you can get, kind of get it. And then, you, of course, you need a really sharp, there you go, hi-hat. So most of those sounds are created just using the noise and the filter, whatever the resonance is. So there's your basic programming to an analog synthesizer. Now we also have some other models. So then if you go into, I'm just going to adjust this so that I'm playing not the Prophet 53 anymore, the Pro 53. I'm going to be playing the ES1. So here's what I've got. And I can do similar things over here. So I'm going to create the telephone sound again over here. So it doesn't matter what my cutoff is, I'm going to open it up a little bit. Here's my resonance. So I'm going to change the LFO to be a square wave. So it's going to go back and forth. Here's my minimum adjustment on the LFO. This is how fast it's happening and it's being applied to pitch. Right, so. And of course, it has a little bit of resonance. I don't like that. And I also don't want the attack of it to. Open up that filter a little bit. Yeah, so it's not great, but you get the idea, right? So it's the same type of thing. If you want to have, I can turn that off by just pulling this all the way down. And if I want the pitch to rise up, I can assign the mod envelope to be assigned to pitch. I'm going to increase the amount, and then I can change it to go up and down. There you go, and if I go the opposite direction, it should go up in pitch. Let's try and get it. There you go. So then there's an example of a mod pitch. One time through with an envelope and a continuous example with a low frequency oscillator. A great way of figuring out what synth sounds are doing is just to select the default to try and find some presets and say, okay, what does this sound like? You choose a sound, you press play. You can hear the pulsing in it. So then try and figure out what's going on with the sound. Something's happening steadily over time, so then therefore the low frequency oscillator must be assigned to something. And sure enough, the low frequency oscillator is being assigned at 7 hertz to the pulse width, which is on the square wave over here. So go through, check out some presets, and uh, good luck with your synthesizer programming.